Wild daffodils are endangered in the wild, um, but where they grow they're very common because they spread uh, a lot, but they don't spread very far from where they drop. Um, but all the woods and hedges we've done, we've put lots and lots of wild daffodils in and we've, they propagate very easily. Um, these are some we did um, quite some time ago, maybe eight years I think, and they've now spread into nice little clumps and seeded themselves all over the place. Here you can see how the clumps have spread um, and over here you can see lots of little baby ones where they've seeded themselves. Here you can see where individual daffodil bulbs have spread into nice little clumps. Uh, there's one there starting to spread into a little clump and here you can see where lots of little seedling daffodils have grown. They take seven years to reach maturity from growing from seed and then once they do, once they start flowering, then they start dividing up and forming clumps. The easiest way to propagate them is by dividing the clumps when they get really big, like that one is doing. Wild daffodils are very temperature sensitive, so if it's mild weather they'll, they'll do the whole process much more quickly. If it stays mild the flowering season won't be long. But always, this area which is warm by the water and traps the sun, and similar areas, this is where they come up first. And you can see uh, the daffodils down here are the most advanced, they're fully out. Um, if you look behind them on the bank there, um, they're half out. Some of them are in bud, some of them are out. But if you look over here, um, they're, they, they're not quite so far out. They're more exposed and they're mostly in bud still. And if you look on the bank behind, they're not out at all out there because they're exposed to the elements and, uh, and they get all of the wind and everything. So they're extremely temperature sensitive. The ones that are the most exposed, the most northerly facing will come out last. The ones that are the most sheltered and the most southerly facing will come out first. So on a, weir, a year like this, where it's uh, really unusually hot, they've come out really, really early because the, the heat is triggering them off. Here's quite an exposed area and they're still tight in bud. Lots of primroses coming out as well. Here you can see them coming out in a hedge and we plant them all in the hedges and they do really, really well. They will grow in a variety of different environments. They'll grow anywhere where there's enough leaf mold from trees um, and, uh, and where they've got um, a growing grass and the woodland and hedges, they'll, uh, they'll, they're quite tough really. Most of the ones in the hedges though aren't flowering yet because they're more exposed usually. Some places they do much much better than others, although they do grow well in nearly everywhere. Um, this is one of the best places, they love it here. Loads of clumps coming up all over the place, including little seedlings where they're starting to grow and uh, over there loads and loads of big clumps and he's starting to flower but most still in tight bud wild daffodils do take quite a while to establish and look really good this little bit we planted last year these trees were all planted last year and here They've uh, just um, not you know too impressive yet, but they've got a few flowers coming, so they're actually quite good. That one spread into a clump somehow, uh, but uh, yeah, usually they take uh, quite long to establish. They do for like if they're in a perfect environment. They don't really mind if they're facing north or south. Um, they don't really mind if it's damp or dry, as long as it's not boggy. And uh, they're growing all over the place, just as long as there's leaves from deciduous trees, they'll be happy. Like here, you could just see the odd one, but in the future this will be a carpet of them. Daffodils and snowdrops do seem to grow very well together, or at least the wild ones, I suppose cultivated ones as well, uh, because the snowdrops come up and do their thing before the daffodils are out. Um, so the daffodils are just like little spikes when the snowdrops are flowering. And then as the snowdrops are finishing, the daffodils then come up, um, and they do seem to do very well together. Both daffodils and snowdrops are temperature sensitive and uh, if it's really mild weather like it is now, uh, this flowering season doesn't last long at all. 
uh, this year snowdrop season has just boom, straight past because uh, usually the weather is much colder and the snowdrops last at least two weeks but the whole process takes longer and the same will happen if this warm weather continues uh, the daffodil season won't last long at all. The weather this February has been so exceptionally mild that it's even quite pleasant to paddle in the pond. Another problem this year has been slug damage. You can see how chewed these flowers are. Now, with it being mild, it's been exceptionally wet and slugs just love wet weather. So a lot of the flowers on the snowdrops and the daffodils have been really badly chewed. It doesn't matter too much if the flowers get eaten. It matters for this year uh, because it uh, affects what they look like. Um, but uh, the fact that the, the flowers are eaten, not the leaves, the slugs don't seem to like the leaves on either snowdrops or on the daffodils. Um, so uh, if the flowers are eaten, the plants aren't putting so much energy into the flowers and the seeds, but instead they'll put more energy into the leaves and propagating themselves vegetatively. So on years like this, where there's exceptional rain and exceptionally high slugs, the uh, clumps build up more, um, but uh, well, they, it doesn't look very nice when they all get chewed by slugs, but so there's always uh, a lot that don't. Well, daffodils are very good at producing lots of seeds, but they're not very good at transporting them very far. Um, they, uh, uh, they seem to, where you've got a clump of them, like here, um, they sort of, the heads tangle with neighbouring clumps when, they, when they're developing, and they produce millions and millions of seeds all around the clump. So naturally, the clump seems to advance like so many feet a year as the seeds gradually get a bit further. So by plonking the odd one in a hedge or in a woods where they can start a new advancing clump is always a good thing. Um, so the reason they're of course they're so scarce in the wild is mainly from land use change. Uh, if you dig up uh, some, there's millions of seedlings, you know, there's, there's, they're always where they are, there are millions of them. Um, but then they're not in most places, and this is because of pesticides, uh, replacing deciduous woodland with conifers, uh, allowing sort of grazing animals excessively into woodland areas, and loads of other things, also invasive weeds, particularly cherry laurel, which uh, just wipes out everything in the forest floor. Um, but uh, when they grow, they're very prolific. Um, I think maybe once upon a time there was some animal that transported the seeds, and maybe they that they were that more successful that way, but they, the seeds don't seem to fall very far from the plant. But where you do get enormous clumps of them growing, you do find then little satellite clumps starting to form in uh, nearby woods and hedges. So uh, in time they'll be as common as they once were, but they are really, really beautiful plants. Uh, and you get so many of them in the woods, it just lights up the whole forest floor like it will be here in uh, maybe a week or sooner in this weather. So out of all the wild plants that we put here, I like to really specialise more in the wild daffodils and just produce loads of them and plant them everywhere. Here's another place where they're growing alongside snowdrops. There's always this slight little overlap period where they're both flowering together. The Latin name of wild daffodils is Narcissus pseudo-narcissus. Um, and they grow in... Uh, mainland Britain, um, as far north at least as Cumbria, um, and uh, sort of just in uh, little isolated places, usually quite close to rivers. Um, one thing I've noticed about rivers is you always get them growing on both sides, and I've sort of studied this for a while, and I've noticed that when bits break off the bank due to erosion, the daffodils get washed up on the other side and root, so you get them like, transported by the river and they float as well, so they wash up just on the other side and they root, so you get them going along river banks, even though they don't like it particularly boggy, they will grow in damp ground, but uh, the reason they grow so well along river banks is because the river transports them, um, but uh, they do grow very well away from river banks as well, um, so look over here a minute. Uh, the air is very dry on a, on a narrow bank hedge, so they, they, do, they don't need to be in a wet place. They'll do very well in a variety of different places. The whole Narcissus family seems to be mainly from Europe and West Asia, 
and there's loads of different types of them, uh, many of them which they're cultivated ones are derived from. Um, there's loads of different ones in mountain ranges like the Alps, uh, but these are the ones that come from here. And uh, it's nice to see them doing really well and they're one really big bright yellow statement that comes out in the spring, uh, which really says that spring is here. And uh, daffodils are supposed to make you feel happy when you see all that bright yellow, it's supposed to make you feel happy. So I always like to plant lots of them, so after the winter you get this big bright yellow happy uh, thing everywhere. And I think that's really good. Well, I think that's covered everything. Um, and um, hope you liked today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you press the little me, which is somewhere down there, then you can see my other videos. And I shall see you next time.